Hello, people of YouTube land, it is your boy Tigle Beagle back again with another YouTube rant video. And today, I want to talk about one of the hottest new shows on the block, one of my personal favorites to watch at the moment Hell of a Boss. No, it has been Hotel. D sorry, di different show. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah. But, um, gotta say, Watch Dollar Has Been Hotel. Oh my fucking god. What, are, what is Twitter whining about, bro? Holy shit. This show's so good. It made me laugh. It made me emotional. It made me like. Made me like. What, what's the term? What's the term? Come? What the fuck was I about to say come? But on a serious note, this show has done so much for me because I haven't found a good comedy show, like a good comedy cartoon show in a while that also could deal with sensitive topics. Hell of a Boss came close to this, but overall it doesn't really deal with sensitive topics, it more deals with, like, abuse, which is still sensitive in a way, however it's been done so much that I don't consider it sensitive content. Like, um, a sexual abuse I consider uh, sensitive content, but emotional abuse I don't consider that as sensitive, uh, just because it's been done so much and so normalized. And stuff. Perhaps there was a show I'm not thinking of that did this, and if there is, I did not hear about it, and I would like you to, you know, uh, put that in the comments for me so I can watch it, because I need more shit like this, as well as it has Electro Swing in it, which being one of the only two people who have been fans of Electro Swing his entire life, I fucking love this shit, bro. God, it stayed gone, my favorite song, for a goddamn reason, and even though Mimsy ruined hell's greatest dad in my opinion at least fucking amazing song also sorry if you're hearing background noise there's like a thousand chords that i'm tangled up in right now that i'm trying to make sure don't cause my computer to fucking short circuit or overheat because one of them is connected to a heater due to right now me living in a winter fucking wonderland god i love indiana indiana doesn't love me hot Damn, they do not love gay people here. I tell you what, that's a story for another day. Let's focus on the show that does love gay people. The main characters are just so enthralling and make me want to watch it over and over again. However, there are some flaws that other people have pointed out and I have discovered myself that I'm going to be talking about here. I'm going to be talking about whether they are valid, semi-valid, in which case like they make sense, but there's also some way to explain them away. However, it's a little inconsistent, so I'm not really sure, or unvalid, to the point, like, these are criticisms that just make no fucking sense. And I'm gonna start with one of these unvalid criticisms, specifically in the criticism that it has too much swearing. That's a real fucking critique, people have. I get it, if you don't like that the show has so much swearing in it, but not only does that tone down by episode 3, you're bitching about the first two episodes, ladies and gentlemen. But also, it's an adult show. If you don't like that it has swearing, cool, great. It's made for adults. Deal with it. And if you do hate that it has swearing, don't sit there and say it's a horrible show because of it. It's one flaw that you don't like. However, the rest of the show, you don't criticize at all. Yet just because it has a lot of swearing, it's garbage. That's a very unvalid critique. Like, even if you don't like a lot of swearing, which even I'll admit sometimes there was a bit much, it did not make the show trash. It was just some dialogue that wasn't very good. Which, guess what? Things aren't perfect. The best things in this world have problems with them. And this is one of those problems with one of my favorite shows of all time. I'll fully acknowledge that. However, don't sit there and say that the show is a piece of shit because of it. I have only seen this critique on Twitter for a reason, because no fucking sane person legitimately thinks that it, it has so much swearing that it's garbage. No fucking sane person. Now, moving on to a semi-valid critique, we have that the show does not have a main premise because it abandons it. This is kind of valid in the fact that it's factually correct, however it doesn't make the show bad. I want to preface that. It is factually correct in the fact that, yes, the show does kind of abandon the hotel eventually. Uh, in the f not in the the hotel doesn't exist part in the oh uh, sorry I just had to move something it abandons it in the way of that it's not the main focus like the main focus isn't getting sinners to come to this hotel and rehabilitate themselves granted I think this will change uh, especially since we just got the hotel revamp to be way bigger which is what I think this entire season was building up to was not really the hotel itself but more 
the hotel uh, truly coming into inception and also people starting to come into it because one of the characters, I'm not going to spoil who it is, uh, actually does get redeemed and go to heaven, proving that it works. So people are going to want to come to it. So I think this is valid in the fact that while, yes, it does, it is true, and if you wanted that, it is true that it hasn't happened yet. I think it's unvalid in the fact that we have plenty of evidence stating that it will happen, as well as it's unvalid in the fact that the show would be boring if that was the only thing happening. Like, if that was the main focus, where it's just like, Sinner come in, like, it's like day, what's it called, weekly episodes, like villain of the week type story with like a Sinner coming in, and they focus on a different Sinner each time, that would be boring as shit. I mean, maybe you'd find it, like, entertaining, but me personally, it's just my opinion, if you have a different opinion than this, that's perfectly fine, I want to preface that in my opinion, and many other people's opinions, the majority, that would be boring as fuck, and would be uninteresting. We got interested in this show, not for the premise, for the characters. And that's why season one is so good, because instead of focusing fully on the premise, which it does to an extent, it also mainly focuses on the characters and their growths and their struggles. That was what we started watching it for. And oh my god, it delivered! I mean, besides like Nifty, I can't name a smidgen of character development, but I like her little gremlin energy, so I'm not exactly too mad about it. She's still one of my favorite characters. Woo! <laughs> a criticism that I myself have come up with, I haven't I haven't seen like anyone else talk about this, but I myself do have this criticism, is the fact that the angels aren't threatening. We constantly hear stories about how, oh, they kill all the demons, they kill all the demons, in the pilot we see that, and in Maggie's flashback we see that. However, whenever we see them fight, like, decently strong demons, the only ones that actually put in any effort are Loot and Adam. All the other angels can get bodied by small level demons, by not even demons that are that strong. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It, it really doesn't. Even Adam himself... Like, at, he felt like a good antagonist in the fact that he was annoying, but he didn't feel threatening, which I think is what Loot and Lilith are going to impose for the next season, as well as Alistair eventually, because I do think Alistair will eventually become an antagonist based on what we've seen in Season 1 and what we know about him and what we can theorize about him. Absolutely, absolutely positively will become <coughs> an antagonist. Sorry there. However... It's uh, the fact that the angels just really didn't feel like a threat. In Carmelo's flashback, we literally see her dispatch them quite fucking easily. If you have any level of combat experience, then, like, you wipe the floor with angels. Like, even Adam, Alistair points out he's sloppy. Anyone with equal power to him can beat his ass. It's like how Homelander is. He's only strong because there's no one else in the world to match him. As soon as someone would come in that matches his power, they'd beat him because they have a moniker of technique, whereas Homelander has fucking nothing. It is the same logic here with Adam. And as well as I want to address a non-valid critique, in my opinion, uh, that Adam is a bad character and doesn't make any sense. He's just a dick to be a dick. To an extent... Maybe. Is that the truth? Absolutely fucking not. Adam is a pretty decent character. He's not a good character, but he's a decent character. Now, why would Adam act like this, man? He's the first man supposed to be holy. The first man, yes, who ate an apple of sin, learning what sin is, and then because of that, in this universe at least, was put on a pedestal where he controlled the most power among a ring of angels who go down and kill people and undermine an entire civilization. You're telling me he wouldn't get a power boner from that? And I guarantee he would word it like a power boner. Like, that's exactly what any human who went through Adam's experience would get. Absolutely. In that situation, Anyone, and I mean anyone, even the nicest people would eventually become super corrupt because they lived their entire life in peace, found out what sin was, and then immediately was put on a pedestal. Oh, and by the way, he's killing the people. Like, the king of hell fucked his wives, his first and his second wife. Of course he is going to want to kill that man and his people. 
And he's, of course, he's getting, like, power hungry because of it. So his character makes a lot of damn sense. And when he, like, you even can hear it when he's dying. Talks about, you all should be grateful I created all of you. All of you, I created you. You should be bowing on your knees for me. He's so power hungry because of what the angels put him on. And also, another unvalid critique that I heard once was the fact that it makes no sense why, uh... Like, Sir Pentius can go to heaven without the angels approving it. Or the fact that, like, um, Vaggy can sprout her wings without the angels, like, letting her back in. Now, why would Vaggy re-sprout her wings? Of course. Uh, it's a bit of a spoiler, but, uh, if you don't know, I'm not gonna tell you, so you can actually watch the show and find out what the hell I'm talking about. But you'll figure it out. However, I have a little bit of a theory as to why she did. So... Why isn't God present in the series? Here's my theory on that. He's so goddamn busy. That's why people like the Sherubs from Hell of a Boss and all these angels can actually exist. Because they've been unmonitored and they are basically just humans with wings and were put on power over a civilization similar to Adam. They're basically just a bunch of atoms, but like the Seraphim are gaslighters instead of outward dicks. You get what I'm saying? It's pure pure pride which is kind of odd because it feels like the guy who leads the pride ring you know the, satan has less pride than the goddamn seraphim lady i that is goddamn wild but it kind of makes sense in the context of a story where it's about like how hell has rehabilitated itself a lot of the people rehabilitated themselves and a lot of people in heaven have become sinners. It is quite an interesting story that I may have to go more in depth to as I go through this for you. But this is more about the critiques of Hasbin Hotel. And uh, I should probably get back on the theory I was just talking about. That's my bad. Go a bit off on the rails in these videos sometimes. You get what I mean. You get what I mean. However, let's get back to it. So, how does she sprout her wings? We already went over. God is probably very busy. So, he can't keep track of like the angels and all that. He can't. Keep track of them however his will still is probably being done like for example god is omnipresent right so he doesn't just solve everyone's problems for them however if he does see if he does see that someone has changed and like they've changed into a bad person at least it's my belief as well he because he's so busy he's giving them chances like okay I'm busy as fuck, so I'm gonna give you a chance. That's pretty much what I think. And Vaggy went from a person who disobeyed direct angel rule, even though that was technically a good thing considering the angels in this universe, uh, forcibly getting her wings taken away. She then, of course, was lying constantly to Charlie, which is why she didn't throw back her wings initially. However, now that she has... The truth has gotten out to Charlie, she's apologized, and she's willing to fight for Charlie and Charlie's people... She grows her wings back because she's truly redeemed herself for what she did. Which is, of course, you know, years of killing sinners and then lying to one of those sinners to get on their good side. Which was a dick move. Like, Vaggy, it, Vaggy definitely should be forgiven by Charlie, but uh, not by me. I, I give too much forgiveness out as it is, brother. I, I don't really give a damn. Another criticism I have seen, which is the least the least valuable criticism ever is the fact that in episode four where they discuss there are themes of sexual assault i should say that it is victim blaming i want you to name one itty bitty tiny monochrome like pinch salt worth of enjoyability out of valentino he is shown to be the whiniest little unlikable fuck in the show for a reason. Valentino is a bad person, but he is but he has good qualities that make you like him. The TV Jeff Bezos guy, I forget his name off the top of it. Vox, Vox. He may be a piece of shit, but he has qualities that make you go, ha, this guy's funny. I like him. The fashionista girl, uh Velvet, I believe is her name off the top of my head. Uh she has like she's kind of an asshole, but she definitely has a lot of qualities that make her entertaining. And also, before anyone says, I'm just gonna debunk this criticism, no, she's not cringe, she's what every fucking influencer acts like on this website, and you may say that's cringe, but 
the same people who say that's cringe also ex act exactly like this when they do their videos, so shut the fuck up, frankly. Now, back to the criticism I was just discussing. Uh, sorry if you heard a bump, I just actually hit my fucking desk and now my hand hurts. Ah. However, name one thing Val did that was cool. Like, yeah, he's this, like, mustache twirling, um, what's it called, accent changing villain? However, that more shows how pathetic he is. He's constantly changing these accents as he talks. He sounds like that one weird kid in the back of the class who eats fucking ramen while reading Naruto, which isn't bad. However, then proceeds to walk up to a girl, throw out Naruto hand signs, and says, You'll take me to the dance jutsu or some shit like that. No, a guy like that. He's the creepiest fuck ever. I sit next to him in one of my hours, and I want to die every single fucking day of my life. I go there. Bro smells like he- last time he washed the Great Depression was a thing. Bro smells like last time he washed the fucking dinosaurs conjoined. Not to mention he looks like a goddamn naked mole rat looking head ass. You know what? Back to- back to Hasbro Hotel before this turns into a roast section. <laughs> fucking hell. Not even that good at roasting. <clears throat> but like I said, it makes him look kind of pathetic and like he's vining for attention. He has intense anger issues. He can't hold back his emotions. He lashes out at random people. He is constantly shown to be a douchebag and a prick. He's smug as fuck. He loves killing people, which is a, like a thing for everyone in the show. However, with him, it's almost fucking tenfold more disturbing. And he like jokes about fucking raping people and is, you know, tries to fuck the person in a lesbian non-poly relationship. Yeah, he's not a good person, and anyone who thinks he's a good person has something genuinely fucking wrong with them. Which is basically everyone on Twitter. What? what <laughs> wouldn't you know, the people on Twitter are fucking brain rot. Who could figure that one out, boys? There is literally no redeemable qualities in him, and yet the person he's shown to sexually abuse, Angel Dust, has so many qualities that make us love and root for him, that makes you hate Valentino. I mean, hell, through the manipulation we see him go through and how he acts, which, by the way, is such an accurate depiction of having a toxic relationship. Like, I've, I've been in one, and oh my god, that is the most accurate depiction of what it's like. It is so fucking draining and traumatizing, bro. I swear to god. But anyways, back to it. Back to it. I just reel myself back. I keep getting fucking off track because I love this show so goddamn it's so good, bro. It's so fucking good. Because of this, the show automatically makes you root for Angel Dust and makes you hate Valentino like you should. There should not be redeemable qualities in a fucking rapist. Valentino has canonically raped Angel Dust, by the way. He has no redeemable qualities for a reason. Where you say, well, everyone has multiple dimensions to them. The only dimension that a rapist should show is the fucking, like, is the dimension I'll be sending them when I meet them in real life, also known as the fucking Shadow Realm. What's the transportation method? A Glock. But yeah, those are the main criticisms of Hell of a Boss and why I either believe them, don't believe them, or is iffy on them. And of course, I want to state that if you do disagree with me, you're absolutely allowed to. Except on the Angel Dust and Valentino one, I genuinely think if you think Valentino was considered a good person there, you need a fucking reality check. Because straight up, it, by stating that it's victim blaming, you're stating that Angel Dust is either a bad person, which means you have a very low concept of what defines a good person, or you think Valentino's a good fucking person. In which case, you're absolutely a terrible person who think rapists are okay. And before you say, well, he's a good personality, that's like saying Mini Lad is okay, be even though he literally tried to fuck 16-year-olds while being in his goddamn 20s or 30s because he's charismatic. No, he's just a piece of shit. That's like saying, fuck it, what's her name? Uh, the person who dated Bella and, you know... Like, only Jaius, the person who dated only Jaius, and then cheated on her, is okay because everyone makes mistakes and she has a goofy, quirky personality. She's a fucking piece of shit! Do not defend her with, she has a goofy, quirky personality! Got off track there, once again, you get what I mean. However, if you disagree with any of my other points, 
talk in the comments about it. I would really like to hear your opinions on this, and I, I do love hearing opinions. Like, in the comments, reading the comment section of these videos has been my favorite comment section to read. Not because of the hate, but because of the genuine opinions you display and allow me to look at it through another person's lens. I love that so much. It is the reason I love doing these videos so much, as well as they're easy to edit. That's another thing. <laughs> My previous videos were like a bitch to edit, mostly because I was doing other shit while I was editing them, so it just became a chore. But with this, it takes, it's really easy to edit it. It's just the fact that I'm depressed, so it takes me a lot of motivation to actually want to do them. But you know what? I powered through it, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So I do appreciate you guys stopping by and listening to this video. Please go check out my other rant videos if you want. Hopefully the rant playlist has been fixed. I accidentally added a bunch of videos there. I meant to put in my watch later playlist. However, hopefully it's fixed, and I hope to see you all later. Bye bye